One of the biggest reasons, or maybe the only legitimate reason, that we plant our food plots is to attract deer so that we can hunt them. Some people may be able to put in large enough food plots that can provide a good amount of forage, but most of us are in that kill plot range. So we pick out these species we want to plant in our food plots to specifically attract deer during the early, middle, and late parts of the season. We dish out the money for soil samples, for lime, for fertilizer, not to mention some of these seeds are pretty pricey on their own, and then we spend a lot of our time just cultivating it. And hopefully you got some rain and after a few weeks you got a lush green carpet of attractive food that will put deer and hopefully a good buck in front of us during daylight hours. It just looks perfect. Then hunting season rolls around and all of a sudden they're only showing up at the very last bit of daylight or they wait until completely dark to come out into that food plot. So what went wrong? What changed? Did all the deer just start going to your neighbors? Did we plant the wrong species? Well, some of that could possibly be true, but I would bet the biggest problem is you. So in this video, we're going to go over three ways that you can increase daylight activity in your food plots so you can more effectively hunt them. But before we go over these tips, do me a favor and if this is your first time on my channel, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And the first tip to increasing daylight activity in your food plots is to not hunt them like an idiot. The perfect stand setup would be so that you could get to and from your stand without ever coming into view of anything in that plot. If you have to walk next to it or in front of it or God forbid through it, you are really shooting yourself in the foot. Now sometimes you just can't help you know, having to walk a little bit next to it. There might be just the way the terrain is or, or maybe the way the trees are that you can't help but walk kind of next to it where there might be some chances for something out there to see you walking to your stand. I did a video a couple weeks ago about better screening options to get to and from your tree stands or just to you know, hide your food plots a little better. Make sure you check that out. Years ago when I hunted private lands that had other hunters on it, I watched in amazement as one hunter would walk through the middle of his food plot, wind blowing into the plot, to sit in a tiny tree that jutted out into the plot. That is not a good way to hunt your food plots. As you probably just heard me say, I said into the plot quite a bit, and that's not what you want. You don't want anything, your scent, your movement, your stand, into the plot. For one, your stand should not be out in the open in a tiny little tree. It should be in a tree that is about as wide as you or your stand is, unless it's got great cover behind it. Otherwise, you just to the deer, you're just going to be a giant blob in a skinny little tree. There's nothing to break up your pattern. It should be back off of the food plot into the edge of the plot at least a few yards and should be situated in a way that you can get to and from it without the deer ever knowing you're there. Now hopefully your food plot is situated in a way that you have that option. If not, you know, maybe you planted it and didn't realize until later that there really was just no good way to get to and from it without alerting deer. Maybe you should just abandon that plot altogether. Just because an area is out in the open, it's flat, doesn't mean you have to put a food plot in it. There's a lot of things to consider when you're putting in a new plot. Otherwise, if you do have the option, move your stand with those things in mind and you will see a lot more daylight activity in that food plot. And the second tip to increasing daylight deer activity in your food plots is to make deer feel more comfortable out in them. Deer know when deer season starts. It's why you see them on your cameras all summer and then when deer season comes around they're just they're just gone. Part of this is hunting your food plots smart. Deer are going to go where they feel the safest and you if like I said if you hunt your food plots like an idiot, they're not going to feel safe there. Edge feathering means that you are softening that edge. It's a gentle slope from your food plots up to the mature trees. So you start with, you know, the innermost perimeter is native grasses and forbs. And then that next outer layer is shrubs and smaller trees, some maybe some hinge cut trees. And then it goes into, you know, slightly taller trees and then the mature trees. Not only is this going to provide more cover, make the deer feel more safe, but it's also going to provide more food. Now we'll caveat this edge feathering with a word of caution. If the rest of your property is just extremely poor bedding, there's just nothing for deer to bed in, no good place, and you start increasing the amount of cover around your food plots, you're gonna make your edge feathering the best place for them to bed. And that's gonna make it extremely hard to hunt that food plot without alerting deer. So if you've got poor cover quality on your property, Try to define the cover a little better. Maybe put in some bedding thickets, encourage them to bed there, and then work on the edge feathering, the cover around your food plots. Otherwise, like I said, it's gonna be a nightmare to hunt. 
Another way to make deer feel more comfortable out in your food plots is to design them better. Skinnier food plots tend to be better than large open ones, large circles or rectangles. On those skinnier plots, cover is just a few jumps away, rather than in these large plots where they got an all-out sprint to get to cover. Now that doesn't mean that having these large food plots is a bad thing. It's actually pretty cool to be able to have these big multiple acre food plots. But instead of having one giant food plot, it's better to break them up into smaller sections, kind of a cluster of kill plots. You can plant different things in them. You can, you know, do some creative things to break them up. But deer are going to feel more comfortable when they've got cover closer. They're going to be out there more during daylight hours and they're going to look a little less nervous out there. Another option is to just stop planting the outer edges of that food plot. Kind of let that early successional habitat take over. You're almost edge feathering in reverse rather than extending that cover out away from the food plot. Like I said, there's a lot of ways you can accomplish this, but I guarantee you if you increase the amount of cover around the amount of security around your food plot, deer are going to be out there more during daylight hours. But again, as long as you hunt it smart. And the third tip to increasing daylight activity in your food plots is to maybe not hunt them so much. I know it's probably going to annoy some of you that my tip to help you be more successful hunting your food plot is to not hunt your food plot, but hear me out. Food plots are a great hunting tool for those who have the privilege to be able to put in food plots, but I think we rely on them way too much. Like I said, they are a great hunting tool, but no matter what you do, sometimes deer just don't want to come out, especially older deer. They just don't want to step out during daylight hours. They just don't feel safe. This is especially true in those high hunting pressure areas. So instead of trying to coax them where they don't want to go, why not try to hunt them where they already like to go, where they feel more safe? Start hunting those trails to and from those food plots. Get on those pinch points in the woods, those benches, those draws, and those bedding areas if it's the right time, and intercept those bucks that are just too hesitant to step out. Don't get stuck in this loop that you have to hunt your food plots all the time, because even if you've got great scent control, even if you are always well hidden, you can still easily burn out a good spot. So that was three tips to helping you increase daylight activity in your food plots. Well, I, two tips and then one to help you if you just can't get them to step out. If you have any more tips you'd like to share, make sure you leave those down in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like this video, share it if you found it helpful, and make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.